time ice fishing today in the great state of Michigan with the crew of Clear H2O Tackle, the owner Darren Schaap, and his right hand man Blake have put us on fish. Now, it was a big setup to start the day off with. Uh, we're in an area where we know there are fish. So start off drilling a whole bunch of holes, setting up some tip-ups around, around the perimeter, hoping for a big bass or a big pike. But we have located fish on the north end of a lake in its deepest pocket fish. We're going to be fishing 20 to 24 foot deep for bluegill and crappie. Are you taking the hook sets for free thing? Like uh, man, oh man. Okay, and then, and then let's see, now I don't like Blake. Because I here I am. Ooh, we got you some little crappie. Oh, there's your speckled. You live bait today, Blake? I am today. Yes, today. Start off, they've been a little slow. Yeah, a little bit slow. Just keep waiting. I'm waiting for one of you to whoop me. It's kind of like using a Wait, whoa, whoa, what's Derek doing over here? Like Team Clear H2O oh, killing me here. Yeah, yeah, see that right there? Right there. No, 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 I'm looking at that right there. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I guess that too. Come on, Darren. Yeah. Share some will. Oh, oh that's a little that's better. What we're talking that about. chunky thing there. That's what we're after today. Never mind. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I end up getting. Yeah, yeah. The heater's not on. Oh, finally I hooked up. Uh, feels a little bit better than the three inch I caught. Come on. These fish are reacting much more aggressively when you work the bait up as opposed to sitting on the bottom and jiggle it in front of them. And I tell you another thing that happened is that I was getting one bite after another on my fly. I couldn't get hooked up. And I did catch one, but that was it. And one bite after another. And guys here, H2O, Darren and Blake, using live bait and a hot color like this. As soon as I did that, I immediately, I immediately started catching some fish. I sure can't emphasize the importance of a quality rod when you're doing this. We're using different types of rods. I'm using a, a noodle rod actually with a floating handle. It's a custom rod by Yoders. Baits that we're using, tackle we're using today is all in the description below. And you know what else is in below, down below in the description? Promo codes to save you money on boat products and fishing products. Anyhow, real important to me to have this, this rod. It's real loose at the end, but it's got a great backbone. So it detects the subtle bites and also gives me enough backbone to set the hook and get some good hook penetration. That's a good one too. That's a goodie. Oh, that's a little gill. Darren, tell me about your bait you chose. You don't mind? I don't yeah. see live bait on there. And nope. you are you own a bait shop. What, yeah. what is that thing? I've just got a little piece of plastic on there. Um, what do you call it? I think it's called a tadpole. I, I tadpole. guess, I think so. Huh. And I just, I try and match my plastic up with a jig. Mm -hmm. So I've got a little blue plastic with the crappies in here. I thought maybe we'd be able to catch some looking like a minnow. You got a, you got um, bright colors today. I've noticed you haven't thrown any blacks. Nope, I haven't had to go to that. A lot of times I will use, whoops, I will use a bug imitation plastic and I will go to black and brown, something that looks like a wiggler, something that looks like a bug. Um, but so right going. now I just, I bright, these fish just got, they got to be able to see it. Oh, we got yourselves a crappie. We got a crappie. Woo. Woo. It's, it's all coming together. It was really huge team effort. Uh oh. Yeah, hey, there's a blooper for you. Figuring out, setting everything up, got the tip ups going, all these different areas, all different holes. Now we're starting to position on the ice. Hey! The links to my social media are down below in the description, and I need some more friends, especially on Instagram and Facebook. Look me up, give me a follow, we can be friends, we can chit chat back and forth, we can message each other. It'll be good times. Just keep it about fishing. Keep it about fishing. I know I'm a hot, attractive man. I know that. I know that, but I'm already a happily married man. There you go. Yeah. Let me tell you about the lake for fishing. It's a little lake, but it's uh, it's it's a little lake, but there's a deep hole in the back. 
and uh, the rest of the lake is not necessarily shallow, but there's a deep hole in the back, and that's a tip, a classic wintering hole for any kind of fish, whether it's pike or bluegill, like that nice big jumbo. And so we've set up camp. Uh, we're in about 22 foot of water where most of our fish are being caught, and we've set tip-ups all around the perimeter, hoping for a big pike or maybe a nice bass. And there's crappie and bluegill just swimming through here, and it's interesting. You know, you'll see fish come and go. I think people think fish don't move in the winter. Oh, do they ever move? And they eat like crazy. But nice, fat, delicious bluegills like this. Yeah. All right, but I see you're using pink, huh? Pink. And then I switched up to spikes because it's been a little bit slower and just started fishing again. It worked. When you hook a spike, excellent. Can I see how you hook up a spike on your actual bait there? Do you have it hanging off? I do. Do it just like that. You got two of them on there? I do. Two of them on there. Man, the hour again. Plucking them now. Ooh, you got something with some size there? Oh, you like it. A nice giant bluegill. Nice one. Tell me, when you see a fish on the on your graph, how do you work your bait? The farther you can get a fish to chase it up, generally, they'll bite it. So you put that bait in front of them and just work it above their head? Yep, and as they start to come up, I just keep slowly lifting up a little bit and eventually they turn on and you can tell, they don't, speed up. Don't be tempted to stop moving it up if they're moving up with it. Yep. Keep moving. Yeah. Just like Blake said, just kept working it bait up above that fish and he ate it. He's a cutie. We're, we're gonna let him grow up. GoPro, start recording. Uh, oh, you already are. Uh, is he better? He might be a little bit better. Don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. Yeah, that's pretty good bluegill here. Uh huh. Look at the colors. Oh, there's a chunk. They would if I had stayed with that fly. If I'd say that fly, there's no way I would have caught as many fish as I had today. And I was just talking last week in a video about using that fly in finicky situations. We've had a real nasty cold front move in this area this past 24 hours. And these fish, I don't know if they've adapted to it. And I was thinking that that fly would get me some bites. And it, I guess it did, but they're, this live bait on that tungsten head has got them committed. They commit to those bites. Big. He thinks it's big. Oh, it's a big crappie. That's what I want. Yeah, it's just a pretty good size bluegill. It's 20. This right here is exactly 20. Oh man. 23, 23 and a half feet deep. These fish have been anywhere between 20 and 24, but man, we are just moving around to call it classic hole hopping from one hole to the next i drop my vexlar down to see if there's fish if there's fish i fish for them if i don't see one i just move on to the next one i burn a lot of calories throughout the day that's essentially how you do it you set up shop you cover your area hole hop give them different looks and buddy here's a little start we got over 45 keeper bluegill and crappie today thanks for tuning in until next time, we'll see you on the water, whether it's soft or frozen.